بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Your Excellency, Almighty God, the Most Merciful. Your Excellency, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Your Excellency, the Chairperson of the African Union Commission. Your Excellency, the Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Government, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas, who sends you his warmest greetings and wishes you success at this distinguished assembly, I'm deeply honored to deliver the speech of the State of Palestine. It gives me great pleasure to congratulate the Republic of Senegal and His Excellency President Macky Sall on assuming the presidency of the current session of the African Union. We wish him every success. We also extend our gratitude to the Democratic Republic of Congo and President Felix for the presidency of the previous African Union session. This year's summit is being held under the increasingly important theme building resilience for food security and nutrition on the African continent, accelerate the human capital, social and economic development. Despite the many challenges the state of Palestine faces, our people assure you that we stand with you in achieving your priorities to the best of our ability, expertise, and competencies. In 2013, this auspicious body opened its arms for the Palestinian people and embraced the state of Palestine as an observer state within your assembly of states, a show of solidarity with us in our over seven decades of long struggle to liberate ourselves from the yoke of settler colonialism and military occupation. Of course, the people on the continent of Africa know only too well the devastation and dehumanization that are the hallmarks of colonialism and related system of institutionalized racial discrimination. Your Excellencies, I'm sorry to report to you that the situation of the Palestinian people has only grown more precarious. A few days ago, Amnesty International published a report confirming that Israel is not only guilty for denying Palestinians our human rights, but that Israel is also committing the most grave crimes, the crime of apartheid. From the report, I quote, almost all of Israel's civilian administration and military authorities as well as the governmental and quasi-governmental institutions are involved in the enforcement of the system of apartheid against Palestinians across Israel and in the occupied Palestinian territory and against Palestinian refugees and their descendants outside of Palestine. The patterns prescribed acts perpetuated by Israel both inside Israel and in the occupied territory form a part of a systematic as well as a widespread attack directed against Palestinian population and that the inhuman, inhuman and humane acts committed within the context of this attack have been committed within the intention to maintain the system and amount to the crime against the humanity of apartheid under both the Apartheid Convention and the Rome Statute. Israel has created in its maintaining a system of oppression, domination of the Palestinians through four main strategies. One, deprivation of economic and social rights. Second, segregation and control. Third, disposition of land and property. Fourth, fragmentation into domains of control. Your Excellencies, a Human Rights Watch Foundation last year also stated that Israeli authorities had crossed the threshold by committing crimes of apartheid and persecution. Across the Palestinian territories under its control, 
Israel has demonstrated intent to maintain the domination of Jewish Israelis over Palestinians. In conjunction with that intention, Palestinians have been subjected to systematic of, of oppression and inhumane treatment. Together, these three elements constitute apartheid. When he was Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu said in 2019, Israel is not a state of all its citizens, the nation of the state of a Jewish people only. Currently, two million Palestinians live in Israel are discriminated against. Three million Palestinians in the West Bank live under direct Israeli settler colonialism. And two million Palestinians who live in Gaza have been put under siege for the last 14 years. Nearly 7 million Palestinian refugees suffer from Israeli racist policies that deny them the right to return to their homes. Your Excellencies, Beth Salem, an Israeli information center for human rights, asserted that Israel is an apartheid state. It concluded that the Israeli regime enacts in all, in all the territories under its control, inside the Green Line, East Jerusalem, and the West Bank, including Gaza an apartheid regime, one organizing principle, lies at the base of the wide array of Israeli policies, advancing and perpetuating the supremacy of one group, the Israelis, over another, the Palestinians. Based on these invulnerable facts, documented by neutral bodies, Israel should not be rewarded for the Israel should should Israel be rewarded for its adoption of apartheid, which targets the Palestinian with discrimination policies related to land, planning and housing, and hindering agriculture and industrial development for the Palestinians? Mr. Chairman, Israel should not be rewarded for deepening this fracture following its military occupation of the Palestinian territory, including Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip in 1967 which has led to the establishment of a military system and separation of legal and administrative system to govern the occupied Palestinian territory that has resulted in the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. In Israel today, we, you have, and we have no partners for peace. We have a, a government that is only advocating settler colonialism and apartheid policies. Excellencies, Israel, the occupying power, should not be rewarded for its unlawful killings, torture, administrative detention, persecution, severe injuries inflicted upon the defenseless Palestinian people and depriving them from their freedoms. Israel should not be rewarded for illegally constructing 280 colonial settlements in the West Bank, inhabiting by more than 700,000 Jewish settlers. Israel should not be rewarded for unilaterally annexing East Jerusalem and pursuing measures to continue to change the status of the demographic composition of the Palestinian territories. Israel should not be rewarded for building the annexation and the expansion wall on the Palestinian occupied territory deemed illegal by the International Court of Justice. Israel should not be rewarded for its crimes, including the ongoing siege, bombardment, killings, targeting civilians, and destroying infrastructure in the Gaza Strip in a flagrant violation of international law. Additionally, Mr. Chairman, Israel should not be rewarded for the imposition of movement of restrictions and the closures of the Gaza Strip, the confiscation of land, the creation of isolated besieged enclaves of Bantustans in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, the forcible transfer and displacement of Palestinians, the violation of residency of civil rights, as well as depriving refugees from their rights. Mr. Chairman, today Israel treats the Palestinians are as the hewers of wood and the drawers of water. This should stop. Our faith lies in your alignment with principles of truth, freedom, and peace, and justice. We are confident in your willingness to support the Palestinian people under Israel's prolonged occupation. Israel should never be rewarded for its violation and for the apartheid regime it does impose on the Palestinian people. As an entity, 
Israel has progressed from extremism, extremism to militarism to col colonial expansion. This must stop. Based on your historic stand and your support for the Palestinian right and bear relevant decisions of the United Nations and previous African Union assemblies, we call for the withdrawal and objection of Israeli observer status at the African Union. We believe that granting Israel observer status at the African Union is undeserved reward. This actually a reward that encourages Israel to continue violating international treaties, breaching all agreements with us. With this reward, it gains impunity and accountability. I am confident in your inner wisdom and judgment. The African Union has constantly re resisted colonialism and apartheid. It has continued rejected and condemned Israeli discriminatory policies and practices. The time is right to condemn Israel for its crimes of persecution and apartheid, to end Israeli colonial occupation and enable the Palestinian people to have their right to self-determination towards realization and independence of a state of Palestine on the borders of 4th of June 1967 with East Jerusalem as the capital and to allow the return of the Palestinian refugees. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, I stand before you today to affirm our position, vision, and peace initiative announced by His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas during his speech before the United Nations General Assembly on 24th of September 2021. In his speech, our president called for launching political negotiations under the sole auspices of the Quartet based on international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative, leading to a just and comprehensive solution for the question of Palestine to end Israeli occupation of our land and people toward the independent and independent state of Palestine on the border of June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital. Let me close by wishing you a successful and fruitful summit. We hope that Africa, its countries, and the people will achieve their aspirations for prosperity based on comprehensive sustainable growth, integration and political unity, good governance, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. We hope for the peaceful and secure Africa where development prevails and exists and is shaped by the abilities of women and youth helping to make Africa a strong, influential player in the international arena. We wish the Republic of Ethiopia security and stability. Long live Africa with its friendship with Palestine. Thank you and God bless you.